I'll start recording. So very good afternoon to everyone. So the subject is uh, special histotechnics and the subject code is 21 MSK 716. And uh, so currently we are studying about the enzyme histology, histochemistry, okay, enzyme histochemistry. So coming to your syllabus, in the syllabus, we, in the unit one, we have two important topics. One is all about the neural, neural nervous system of the central nervous system, the cells identification histologically. And uh, chapter two is uh, enzyme histochemistry. So in enzyme, enzyme histochemistry, they discuss about the fixation, prefixation, prior sections, and the demonstration of various enzymes in the tissue, including phosphatase, dehydrogenases, oxidases, esterases, and tyrosinases. Uh, okay, so let us move forward. So the, uh, in the last few lectures, we discussed about the uh, detail about the various uh, enzymes. Okay. Basics in enzymes, what is enzyme substrate, what is a temporary uh, enzyme substrate the complex, and what is product. Then we discuss about the properties of enzymes, factors affecting the enzyme activities. Then we discuss about classification of various enzymes, including oxidoreductases, transferases, hydrolases, diases, isomerases, ligases. Then we discuss about the importance of enzyme histochemistry, significance of enzyme histochemistry, the basic principle of enzyme histochemistry. In enzyme histochemistry, like a material, uh, like a temperature, pH, concentration, inhibitors, activators. Then we discuss about the, the the process of fixation in enzyme histochemistry. Then we discuss the section preparation, just like your histopathology or your immunohistochemistry. Same like that, we will prepare sections here also in enzyme histochemistry. Then we started discussing about the principles and reactions of enzyme histochemistry. Here we discussed the four principles uh, see, uh, you know, that include simple ionic interaction, uh, reaction of aldi aldehydes with the shift reagent, then coupling of aromatic uh, diazonium salts, then uh, conversion of substrate directly into a product, color colored product. Then uh, we discuss about the reactions of uh, enzyme histochemistry that including simultaneous capture, post incubation coupling, self color substrates, and intramolecular reagents. Right. So we emphasized uh, individual things like what is simultaneous capture. So immediately after adding a substrate to the enzyme in the presence of diazonium salt, it will make a primary reaction product. Immediately we will get a color. That is called as a simultaneous reaction. That means in simultaneous reaction, there is no need of any incubation time. Uh, so, uh, here we are bypassing the incubation and directly we are getting a reaction. So that is why it is called uh, simultaneous capture. Then we discuss about post-incubation coupling. So in post-incubation coupling, upon reacting the enzyme with the substrate, it requires certain time to make the product. And the time lag, that the incubation time can be stated as a, this uh, post-incubation coupling method. Okay, so, so this is all about the post-incubation coupling method. Then uh, we discuss about self-coloring substrates. So upon adding the substrate, it will give the color directly. Okay, that is called self, uh, uh, self-coloring substrates. So here they will undergo hydrolysis and they will do colored substrate. So this is all about the self color substrate and uh, coming to the last and final, which is intramolecular rearrangement. So in, in intramolecular re rearrangement, upon adding the substrate to the enzyme, now this enzyme will rearrange the molecules, spatial structure, it will rearrange the molecules in the substrate, resulting in uh, rearrangement of spatial structure of the mole molecular uh, uh, pattern of the substrate, resulting in a color uh, production. So this is called as uh, intramolecular rearrangement. Okay. Then uh, we discussed in detail about a demonstration of one particular enzyme within the tissue that is alkaline phosphatase. So alkaline phosphatase has a tremendous clinical applications, especially in the diagnosis of a cancer to the bone liver. Okay. So bone and liver cancer can be effectively identified by demonstrating the alkaline phosphatase activity within the tissues. Okay, so that is the clinical significance of alkaline phosphatase. So yes, there are certain conditions where uh, we need to see the physiological status of ALP, bone disorders, hepatobiliary diseases, and other carcinomas will exhibit these ALPs. Okay, so coming to the uh, principle of this alkaline phosphatase uh, demonstration. So in the principle, it is very simple. So we will take alpha. Uh, okay, in order to identify the alkaline phosphatase, we will add the substrate which is alpha naphthenol phosphate. Okay. So upon adding alpha naphthenol phosphate to the alkaline phosphatase in the presence of water and pH 9.2, this alkaline phosphatase will break down alpha naphthenol phosphate to it will break down to naphthenol and phosphate. Okay. Now this naphthenol will be subsequently reacted with the diazonium salt. Okay. Now this salt will give us a reaction reactive product which is called azopigment. Now this azop 
uh, uh, discoloration of edge of pigmentation indicates presence of alkaline phosphatase in the tissue and also the intensity of edge of pigment color indicates the quantity the amount of alkaline phosphatase present within the tissue so this is the basic principle of our uh, alkaline phosphatase demonstration we uh, we added a substrate which is alpha naphenol phosphate in the presence of water and ph 9.2 the alkaline phosphate uh, cleaved break down naphthenol and phosphate now this naphthenol has been subsequently uh, reacted with diazonium salt to get the azob pigment right so this is the basic principle of alkaline phosphatase so here are the preparation of various solutions buffers and uh, the substrate solution then uh, we discuss about the procedure so procedure is very simple we will take a biopsy material it will be processed tissue processed okay fixation dehydration clearing and filtration then we will go for our principle okay Inco uh, addition of substrate incubating then the secondary uh, say, uh, uh, addition of diazonium salt and discoloration of, uh, production of azo pigment and also upon finishing this uh, or upon obtaining azo pigmentation upon finishing this uh, enzyme sister chemical analysis now <coughs> now the same tissue need to be counter strained with secondary stain in order to visualize the other part of the tissue so usually here the secondary stain which is recommended is uh, methylene green so we will add one percent methylene green as a secondary stain in order to visualize the tissue okay so this is all about uh, the enzyme histochemistry okay so next so uh, now i'm gonna do one important thing students uh, everyone listen properly uh, we need not to go with other enzymes okay so for other enzymes i have searched uh, in online all are very depth uh, academic uh, notes okay so uh, rather than you just have a surface knowledge on what uh, what is the significance of other enzymes okay i'm not going to give you any principles or uh, uh, in detail uh, notes of individual enzyme detections rather than i will give you some brief notes of other enzymes okay this is enough at least you studied one uh, enzyme right that is sufficient other enzymes you can have a brief overview okay that will be more than sufficient okay so yes uh, two, yes. okay 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 uh, okay uh, one second students i have still work to do yeah. only one second yeah. Sorry, in the beginning of the production. Okay, so now, as I stated, briefly, we will see the other enzymes, okay? Uh, by the way, are you listening, students? Are you following my lecture? Just to give me confirmation in the chat box or by verbally. Are you listening, everyone? Is everyone following my lecture? Why is silence? Is everyone following me? Alexis, Deepika. Amand, Karan, Aspasham, Jaspender, Preeti, Gurmehar. Let me see how many presents here. Okay. So now, let us move on to the next one. So adenosine triphosphate. So what is the significance of uh, uh, detection of this adenosine triphosphate? So adenosine triphosphate can be, uh, it is useful for the identification of type 1, 2, and 3 muscles. So in many muscular disorders, there will be deficiency or depletion of this particular adenosine triphosphate. So demonstration of this adenosine triphosphate will give us an idea about the status, functional status of the muscles. Okay. If there is any muscular dystrophy, any myopathies can be detected by this adenosine triphosphate demonstration. So ATP, yes, adenosine triphosphate is methods are used in combination to distinguish between type 1 type 2 and type 3 muscle fibers okay 
so this distinction is diagnostic diagnostically important since some muscle diseases have uh, characteristic patterns of loss atrophy and grouping of specific fiber types okay or subtypes so some types of uh, structural fiber abnormality such as periodic paralysis can also be demonstrated by uh, uh, demonstrating the adenosine triphosphate within the tissue so most of the muscular disorders can be detected by this uh, atp uh, adenosine triphosphatase uh, technique okay then what is the significance of nadph okay nadh dipos uh, diphosphatase okay so demonstration of mitochond mitochondrial dysfunctions can be detected by demonstrating nadh uh, diphosphatase okay so demonstrating mitochondria and the fine detail of sarcoplasmic reticulum of the fiber okay it is used to detect minor changes or early structural abnormalities in the sarcoplasmic reticulum network of the fiber as well as mitochondrial abnormalities okay so this is the primary usage of nadh detection then coming to the phosphorylase detection so deficiency of phosphorylase enzymes results in a typical muscle disorder called mccardell syndrome so this mccardell syndrome is a syndrome which is occurred due to dysfunctions in the phosphorylase phosphor phosphorylase enzymes okay so phosphorylase also distinguished between type 1 and type 2 fibers but fades away very quickly it is used to exclude mccardell's disease a primary phosphorylase deficiency disorder okay then the fourth one is acid phosphatase and non specific esterases so the idea of demonstration of this acid phosphatase and non specific esterases is to identify macrophages in new necrotic fibers and abnormal lysosomal activities within the muscle fibers okay uh, any muscular disorders that related with macrophageal dysfunctions can be identified by demonstrating the acid phosphatase within the tissues so this is the primary idea behind demonstration of acid phosphatase then last and final is a uh, choline esterases so choline esterases detection will highlight atrophic fibers and to demonstrate intramuscular nerve pigs so intramuscular nerve pigs and atrophic fibers within the tissue can be identified by uh, you know that is the clinical significance of doing this choline esterase uh, demonstration within the tissue so this is all about your uh, enzyme histochemistry okay so a quick uh, revision of your enzyme histochemistry so so far in enzyme histochemistry we discussed all basics of enzymes factors influencing enzymes classification of enzymes uh, principles of enzymes reactions of enzymes and even we discussed about one particular test which is demonstration of alkaline phosphatase within the tissue okay and we have also studied about briefly about various other enzymes and their clinical uh, significance so this is sufficient for all your enzyme histochemistry then let us move on to the next topic so in the unit 1 in the chapter 1 we have this demonstration of various nervous tissues okay so demonstration of various nervous tissues histochemistry okay so uh, now let us see the significance of demonstration of nervous tissue in enzyme histochemistry okay um, uh, in immuno histochemistry methods what are the histological techniques we can adopt in order to identify the neuronal tissue nervous tissue what is the significance of this nervous tissue okay actually nervous tissue demonstration is actively studied in in immunohistochemistry so immunohistochemistry is very good at studying this uh, nervous tissue disorders and nervous tissues okay uh, uh, nervous tissue so now let us see this uh, nervous tissue and uh, its correlated things so histology of nervous system so first you should know some basics about uh, what is nervous system what is the classification of nervous system what is the basic structure of the neuron what are the associated cells like glial cells and other peripheral nervous cells will be studied here okay upon knowing the basics of nervous system now we can move on to the individual cell studies okay so first uh, i want to show you some beautiful animations of uh, uh, development of nervous system in the body okay of a developing fetus so in the developing fetus let us see how a brain will be uh, uh, formed okay so this is a animation a real uh, echo radiography of a fetus which is undergoing morphological changes to develop into a face and brain so uh, here we can clearly see the the face folds the foldings within the face happened because of this brain folding 
first the brain itself is folding within the cranial cavity upon its development only we got the face so our face represents our complexity okay so see how beautiful this animation is so here we can see the uh, development of a face okay here this face foldings are happening because of this brain foldings okay because of developing brain we are getting this beautiful pictures this beautiful outcome so yes brain plays a vital role without brain we, we we won't be conscious it is because of brain we are recognizing that someone is alive if brain is dead we can we will consider that person as a dead person even though his other organs are functioning so brain plays a vital role so any disorder uh, and also another problem with brain is disorders associated with brain is very challenging to diagnose in the laboratory or even in medicine okay because uh, we cannot remove brain from the body to study it so and that is the major limitation brain can be only studied in in, in vivo condition and that is the main limitation where we are unable to do much research but uh, uh, many neurological problems can be detected by studying the brain cells or indirectly by uh, taking the csf the csf sample okay cerebrospinal fluid sample we can able to understand the, the broad range of uh, neurological abnormalities that that contributing to the central nervous system or all nervous system abnormalities and diseases can be uh, effectively identified by uh, studying this uh, brain okay here in our histopathology immunohistochemistry we will see the individual cell cellular structure and their cellular uh, abnormalities uh, in a histochemistry point of view okay so that is the idea of uh, this uh, his, uh, nervous cell uh, demonstration so these nervous cells have very many types of uh, uh, organelles many things that we will see now so basically the the basic classification of a nervous system, uh, central nervous system or entire nervous system so let let me show you a simplest thing yeah so the nervous system is briefly classified into two types central nervous system and peripheral nervous system so central nervous system includes your spinal cord brain stem and brain okay brain brain stem and spinal cord whereas your peripheral nervous system is further divided into two types autonomic and somatic so somatic means uh, uh, Vol uh, in voluntary muscles, voluntary neurons, whereas autonomic means involuntary neurons will be autonomic. Now, even in involuntary, even in involuntary muscles or neurons, they are further classified into sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons. Okay, sympathetic neurons are rapid. Okay, they they are very fast at their uh, actions, whereas parasympathetic are relatively slower compared to the sympathetic. Okay, so this is the basic. Uh, Uh, classification of a neural system now we will discuss about in central nervous system the primary candidate will be the neurons so neurons are the basic uh, foundational unit for entire nervous system so now we will see the structure of neurons then we will also see other other cells called glial cells so these glial cells want to do any function of uh, transmitting electric signals okay rather than they will support they will support the neural cells for their normal functioning the supporting cells are called as glial cells now in this uh, slides in this class we will discuss both the histology of nervous cell and the glial cells what is the histology of glial cell and what is the histology of nervous cells we will see here okay so this is your nervous system cns peripheral nervous system and uh, axillary nervous system okay autonomic nervous system so let me show you the neural neuron so this is the neuron structure so a typical neuron structure have a a head okay a, a head a body and skull to the head it have this uh, fibers finger like projections called dendritics and then uh, head is also called stoma then this this is the axon axon is a uh, how it is uh, it is it has a covering of myelin sheath have a protective layer attached uh, now from this nerve cell it will propagate the electric impulses and this new uh, electric impulses will go to the neurosynaptic junctions so at the bottom you can see neurosynapse synapses now in this synapses the uh, electric signals will be exchanged so this is how a neuron happen uh, works now in this myelin sheet this myelin sheet is given is produced by schwann cells schwann cells are the 
type of glial cell that is responsible for insulating the axon. The whole length of axon has been insulated by this uh, myelin sheet. And this myelin sheet is primarily uh, produced by glial cells. So now we can understand that glial cells playing a vital role in supporting the actual neurons. Okay. So now let us see the classification of other things. So this is a typical neuron, everything. Then uh, let me go to directly go to the glial cells. Yeah. So neuroglial cells. So neuro means neurons, glia means to stick together. So neuron binding cells are called as neuroglial cells. Okay. So this neuroglial cells, we have two types in the uh, cells present in the central nervous system and cells present in the peripheral nervous system. So in central nervous system, we have four types of glial cells. We have astrocytes, microglial cells, oligodendrocytes, and ependymal cells. Whereas the peripheral nervous system, glial cells are satellite cells and Schwann cells. So now let us see what is the role, contributions, significance, and the morphology of this uh, individual glial cells. What is the morphology of astrocytes? microglial, oligodendritic, epidermis, satellite, and Schwann cells. Okay. So now, so this is the meaning. So these glial cells will bind blood-brain barrier. They will, they will fulfill the gap between brain and blood. Okay. They will connect blood to the brain and the connection gap mediators will be the glial cells. Okay. So they are playing vital role in this blood-brain blood -brain barrier. So first one is oligodendritic cells. So what is the function of this oligodendritic cells? So this oligodendritic cells derived from neuroblast cells, their main function is myelinate axons with central nervous system. So actually they are, uh, okay, in the central nervous system, this oligodendritic cells will myelinate the neurons, okay? And uh, this my, uh, microglial cells, so they're derived from embryonic mesenchyme, so they may transform into phagocytes with, within the uh, central nervous system. Then ependymal cells. So ependymal cells are primarily contributing to this uh, uh, production of uh, uh, cerebrospinal fluid. So this CSF is produced because of this ependymal cells. Ependymal cells will secrete this uh, central cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, CSF is secreted by ependymal cells. Then. Uh, coming to the new, uh, neuroglial cells in peripheral nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, we have Schwann cells and satellite cells. Schwann cells derived from neural crest cells, whereas myelinate axons in peripheral nervous system, whereas satellite cells is surrounded by a nerve cell body, may aid in controlling neurochemical environment. So these are the uh, satellite cells and Schwann cells. So these uh, all glial cells are actively participating in the central nervous system for the normal function of the neurons. The normal neurons can be, uh, uh, they can be actively, uh, Ill, they will be actually in functional state because of uh, the support given by the, these glial cells. See here we have astrocytes, we have oligodendritic cells, we have this uh, Schwann cells. So all these cells are actually helping the neurons to do their work properly. So this is all about uh, this one. Now I, I will show you some small YouTube video of this one. So let me let me stop recording this session.